Hello, thank you for attending our webinar today. My name is Hernan, and um, we will be talking about uh, the all-new Thunderbolt Hybrid NAS from QNAP. Uh, I want to thank everybody for attending our webinar today. Uh, it's great we have attendees from Latin America, Canada, and Europe, obviously, as well as the United States. And I want to thank everybody for taking the time uh, to tune in uh, today and take a look at the all-new uh, TVS 871 T, which is the the new QNAP Thunderbolt uh, NAS. So, so a couple housekeeping rules. Now, uh, we will leave the chat open. So, if anyone has any questions, you can find that on the right hand side of your of your go to webinar tool. You can write in any question. Uh, our product manager Nate is on hand to help answer any questions that you guys might have uh, during this presentation. Feel free to ask along. Um, and also at the end, we will try to answer all of your questions before um, the webinar uh, concludes. So feel free to ask any question, and we'll be more than happy to help you guys out and assist uh, with some of those answers. So again, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it to the chat for any questions, and we will begin. So again, we are introducing the world's first Thunderbolt hybrid NAS. Okay? And Now, let's take a look at the current products in the market or what we know as, as um, direct storage, direct attached storage systems uh, commonly used in, in the industry. Now, these are systems um, uh, that you know, we have used um, recently in the past. It's, it's sort of been the norm uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, storage technology when it comes to Macs and when it comes to uh, working in a creative field. And again, so these are some of the products that that uh, that we've come and 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 rely on. So um, there's a few challenges, though, as 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 you know, uh, professionals utilizing um, the DAS systems uh, that they do, they do create some hurdles for you. Okay, and perhaps in the past it's something that well you become accustomed to. Well, now QNAP has has um, we've uh, we've made some changes. Okay, now those those hurdles that you guys are used to taking. You no longer have to take, and here's some of the here's some of the, um, the challenges we have with the DAS systems. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to talk about uh, USB external hard drives. Okay, we're going to talk about RAID drives, and then the USB sticks. Okay, now some of the some of the challenges are the inability to share files. Okay, so again, you're, everything is stored now on the DAS, and you know it's a direct attached storage system. So what's that? It's just in essence, you know, hard drives. Right. So, how do you get that information out? How do you collaborate with it? How do you get it to your, you know, to to someone that's going to do the editing, or someone that's going to do uh, continue to edit or add final touches, or perhaps maybe your customer that wants to look at it and wants to proof it. Okay, how are you going to get it to them? Well, it's in that box. So, how do we get it out? The inability to centralize. Okay, um, a lot of our customers they utilize our QNAS because they love the ability to, the, the, that it gives you to you know, to centralize all of your files. And everyone is able to come in and collaborate and reach these files and, and be able to share it and, and, and save it, right? And so uh, the DAS does not allow you to do this. And remote access, again, another challenge. It's not on a network. It's not going to reach out to the Internet. There's no way of, of directly going into that DAS, taking out the information you want, you know, to share with, you want to get it out, you want to send it to, you know, the other side of the world. It's going to make it really difficult, right? So again, these are some of the hurdles that that in 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 the DAS technology world we've been come, you know, we've we've learned to deal with, right? So um, challenges of using a NAS, okay, a typical NAS as we know, uh, you know, what are, what are some of the challenges? And I think the biggest challenge is the speed, right? Everyone says, oh, I, I love, you know, I love a network attached storage system, but they're, you know, they're kind of slow. So how do we get them faster? Well, you get them on a 10 gig network, but Everyone knows how expensive that can be. Not only do you need a, a NAS that's going to be that's going to be you know uh, uh, compatible with 10 gig, but you need to get a, a, a switch and a router and connectivity. The whole thing has got to you know be restructured, and and that can be expensive. Um, so, and again, the one gig we know obviously slower than a DAS. So here's another challenge that 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 um, that was created by the network attached storage system, the typical ones at least. So here's here's the key. Okay, now speed is the key. So let's take a look at let's take a look at um, the performances of 
of this type of technology that we're talking about. Okay, uh, Thunderbolt 2. Thunderbolt 2 is 20 gig, 20 gigabits of speed of, of per second, and that's that's ripping fast. That's super fast compared to uh, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 1, that is 10 gigs. Okay, and obviously double, and that's what we want. We want speed. We want we want to be able to work seamlessly. We don't want to wait. We don't have to render. We don't have to wait for things to transfer. Working with 10, you know, you're working with 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 files that are large graphic files. Some of these files, you know, are 5K, 8K. You know, some some of these are are very very large massive files. So how do we transfer those? And 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 uh, what's the time it's going to take to transfer these files? Okay. And that's what we're looking at right here. So USB 3, okay? And you can see that's 5 gigs, um, obviously not, not that fast. And, you know, the, the FireWire, okay? FireWire, as we know, it's 0.8 gigs, and USB 2 is 0.5. So respectively, you can see all the speeds of, of the current technology. Okay, now which one do you want? Obviously the fastest. We, we need to get work done, and we need to get, you know, get it out to our customer, and we need to get paid, right? And so that's the name of the game. So how do we do that? How do we accomplish that? So... Here is the accomplishment, okay? Here's what we've developed. Here's what we come up with. And it's, it's something that's been, believe it or not, in the making for the last couple of years. This isn't something we just recently stumbled upon. We've been working on this for a long time, you know, working with Intel Thunderbolt, working, you know, with the technology and trying to fine-tune it and get it, to a, get it to a product that it is now, a finished product. So what we're looking at now is a DAS plus NAS solution. Okay, and you know what? We we travel a lot. We do shows, and people look at this and they're like amazed. How does this work? How does it's doing? So we're going to explain to you how and how we develop this and why we developed it, and it's going to make a lot of sense. So um, here, let's take a look. Let's start number one. Thunderbolt two. Okay, Thunderbolt two is going to give you that that speed we're looking for, right? Now, now we're getting on a network for collaboration. Okay. Now you can come in and share things and pull them out. And since you're on the network, you can get it out to the internet, right? You can you can share out to people. Uh, you can have people coming in. You can have you know in a, in a department, you can have several people accessing it. They don't have to be in that particular you know in that particular office. I mean, they can be spread across uh, anywhere as long as they have internet access. They can access um, these systems and they can access these files and folders. So um, and and another thing is expandability. Okay, before you had a box and you're like, wow, well, I, I, you know, I can't do that, or I, you know, you're working on a project and you realize, hey, you know what? I don't have enough, I don't, I don't have enough room for this, and it happens. I've seen it happen, and so wow, we need more. You know, what are you gonna run, run out and buy another DAS? Uh, not with the QNAP. Okay, with the QNAP, it will expand. Okay, you have your Thunderbolt NAS. Okay, and all you need to do is add an expansion unit, and the expansion unit, which are JBODs, will actually you can actually connect those directly as well via Thunderbolt to your QNAP. Okay, so using the same Thunderbolt connection, using the same Thunderbolt speed, you can connect now your 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 QNAP Thunderbolt NAS with an expansion unit. Now these expansion units come in 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 two two um, two sizes, which is eight bay and five bay. Now, do you have to use all the bays? No, absolutely not. If you only need two of those hard drives, that's fine. If you need to fill in the whole things up, that's fine. And if you need even more of these systems, you can continue adding more and more and more. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later as well. So TVS 871T, okay, it's a file-based DAS, okay, file-based DAS. It's not just a direct connection. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. And in the live demo, we're actually going to walk you through how to do it. Okay, and uh, this is being recorded, so you can always you can always reach this. We will be doing a tutorial as well, a video and a written tutorial, so you guys can can take a look at that as well. And again, we're we're always here to help. We're always here to help. Uh, any technical needs that you guys might have, we're more than happy to walk you through any of this stuff. So uh, it's plug and play without any complex settings. And, and again, we're going to show you how right now, and you're going to see how easy it is to do this. A uh, direct attach between a NAS and a PC and a Mac. And again, very, very important to be able to, to connect direct and not having to pull it through a network, not having to, you know, as we know, traditional NAS. We don't have to pull it through the network now. Now we're direct. Now we're creating content. Now we're developing something and putting it, and, and, and what it does is now gives you the ability for somebody to come in and share it and come in and, and, and collaborate or utilize it, okay? So now anybody can access share folders via the Thunderbolt 2 connectivity. Okay, and again, very important in, in, in when you're working in a team setting, okay, or when you want to share things. Obviously, I don't think any creatives um, out there want to create stuff and not share it or not, you know, not get it out to the public or not get it to the customer. That's what we're here to do, right? So 
why it's the Thunderbolt NAS. And again, let's recap uh, the faster transfer speeds, the direct attach to your computer or to your Mac. Okay, um, again, uh, the, the Thunderbolt 2 um, capa you know, capabilities. Okay, what happened? What, are, what is now the, 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 the standard, right? As we know it, um, I have an old Mac, it has a Thunderbolt 1, um, and I, you know, I got used to that, but now seeing these speeds, I'm like, man, I really need to upgrade, you know, to, to the 2, Thunderbolt 2, you know, and because it's so much faster, it's double the speed, okay? And uh, Windows, okay, selected high end model, so we'll be able to work with that as well. Um, more cost effectiveness. So a 10 gig environment requires, you know, $1,500 to set up. Okay, the Thunderbolt connection is essentially free. Why? It comes with the system. It's built into your system. Let's use it. Okay, it's built in. Why? Why can't we connect it to anything we want? You know, that's our thinking. Well, they should. They should be able to connect it to a NAS storage system. And we've developed that. You know, we we're going to allow you guys to do that now and say, hey, don't worry about it. It's it's there. Let's utilize it. Let's take. You know, let's let's utilize it and get the best out of your Mac system by connecting it to a QNAP and just being able to save things directly, open things directly from the NAS. And so, again, we're going to walk you through that. So, now, the TVS 871T, okay, it comes into, into different models, okay. The models are, and the, 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 the difference between the models is, is actually just the processor, okay. That's the only thing that, that differentiates both of, these, both of these systems. And the one is the, the Core i5 from Intel, okay, and the other one's a Core i7, from Intel. And that's the only two differences between these units is the actual processor. And we allow that because some of our customers need the i7, you know, the i7 processor, while some of our other ones don't need it. And so why should they have to pay for something they don't need? So we created the Core i5. Okay? So again, uh, it's Core Core i5, Core i7, 10 gig ready, okay, 16 gigs of RAM. Okay, and it comes, as a matter of fact, it comes with four, so it comes with four regular LAN connectors, four gig, gigabit LAN connectors. So there, if you need to get on that network, that's fine. You can do that and, and collaborate, okay? So here's, again, let's talk a little bit uh, about what's under the hood, okay? So uh, with, with respectively with the units, obviously, the processor is different. Everything else is the same. The hardware encryption, yes, it does have the, the, uh, the AS, AS and I, encryption, right, that we're always, we want, that's what we want. We want our stuff safe, and it is. It's encrypted. So memory, 16 gigs of memory. So we're there. Okay, flash memory, this is onboard uh, memory. It comes with 512 megs, so that's built in. Okay, uh, the ports, it comes with two Thunderbolt connections. Okay, two Thunderbolt 2 connections, and we're going to explain to you why it has two. Okay, um, it has two because you, with one of them you can expand, and with the other one you can connect it to your Mac or you can connect it to two Macs, okay? And so we're going to talk about that. Or you can connect it to two more expansion units and just daisy chain your way, you know, um, um, to more and more uh, capacity. And I'm going to show you those diagrams and how that's going to work. So um, hard drives, okay? It takes eight, three-and-a-half, or two-and-a-half SATA drives, okay, or SSD drives. And we've seen, we've seen the, the, our systems um, in labs, and we, ha we do have some of our, our customers right now that are testing them, and they're using SSDs. They prefer SSDs, and, and for them, that's, that's, you know, that's what, their, what their standard is. But if SSDs is not your standard, you can always use SATA drives. Okay? You've got SATA 3.5 and 2.5, and so no worries there. Okay? Like I mentioned, the LAN ports. Okay? It comes with two 10-gig LAN ports. Okay? It, it comes with, it built in with two of those. So not just one 10-gig, two 10-gig two ports. And like I mentioned, also it comes with the four with the four gig Ethernet ports, the regular LAN ports. Okay, you you can utilize those as well. USB it comes with three USB ports. Okay, and that's 3.0. And it comes with two 2.0 USB ports. Okay, so you can utilize those as well. Okay, now it comes with the PCI slot, uh, but that PCI slot it's it's a card slot, and that's being used by the Thunderbolt. Okay. So here. Uh, let's look at a little side-by-side -side that we've created here, and what it does, it kind of gives you a visual, okay, of of the of the storage technology that's out there uh, for creatives and for Mac users, okay. So let's take a look at that. We're going to start with the first column, and that's the QNAP. The second column is the DAS, the Direct Attached Storage, okay, and the next one is going to be the typical network attached storage system, the NAS system, okay. So we're going to start by talking about the performance, okay, on the first column, the QNAP. It comes with a Thunderbolt, 
Okay, 20 gigs, as I mentioned, because it has it has dual 10 gigs. It gets you to 20 gigabits of speed. Okay, so super fast. Um, the the DAS it only gets you half that speed. Okay, 10 gigs, as you can see. And then you have the typical or the standard NAS. That's on one gig, as we know, our, our, you know, our LAN networks, they're one gig of speed. Remote access, yes, you can connect and you can access the Thunderbolt NAS via, via you know, internet and connect and you can collaborate from outside of, outside of your actual network via internet. Uh, the DAS is not possible. You can't reach it. It's not a network, so it's, it doesn't connect. The network attached source, some, yes, it does have that as well. It has a traditional connect, connectivity. File sharing. Thunderbolt, yes, you can do that. The Thunderbolt QNAP NAS, yes, you can do that. With the DAS, you cannot do that, as we know. And as with the typical NASs, yes, it's possible. RAID technology, and again, that's really important. You have a disk failure, um, you know, something's in degraded mode, hot swapple, we can take that disk out, put it back in, and it won't affect any of your, any of your work. Okay? That's the great thing about having uh, the ability to RAID. Uh, the DAS doesn't do that. Okay, it depends. On, some do, some don't. If it's a if it's a RAID box, then great. If it doesn't say RAID on it, if it's just a typical DAS, um, then you need to be careful. Okay, if those hard drives start failing, then uh, you know you can compromise some of your work, some of your life work on there, and that's not something you want to do. So the NAS, as we know it, the, the, the traditional NAS, uh, yes, that that uh, that gives you the RAID technology as well. Um, add on a bunch of add-on features. Uh, the QNAP, yes, the direct attached store. No, because it's just you know it's just hard drives, right? It's just hard drives. Um, the typical NAS, traditional NAS, yes, it does. Okay, mobile access again, the ability to even to look at your work via your mobile phone, your smartphone, your laptop. Where it doesn't matter where you're at in the world, as long as you have internet and you can reach that, you can reach your network at your office, at your creative office, and you can you can view your files and say, hey, look, this is what I'm working on right now. Okay, um, with the DAS, you can't. Okay, why? Because again, it's not on a network. It's sitting on the edge of your of your computer. It's outside of the network, so there's no way of getting getting to it. Um, for the NAS, traditional NAS, yes, it's possible. And that's what's made the you know that network attached storage system so so popular is ability to get out you know in the internet because of you know it's connected on a network. So how does it work? How does this technology work? And we're gonna we're gonna reveal our secret right now. So here it is. It's actually IP over Thunderbolt. Okay, it actually is, and you're going to see that. We're, I'm going to show you uh, the the QNAP uh, the QNAP NAS um, IP, and I'm going to show you as well. Um, I'm going to show you as well the Thunderbolt IP. There's actually two IPs running within the system, so I'm going to we're going to we're going to show you those right now and and how that works. Okay, so and how not to confuse yourself. We're going to walk you through that, so no worries. So the Thunderbolt two um, can run on on a network running FTP files sharing. Okay, but that's not enough. Okay, so again, we have two Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt 2 ports, okay, and then we have the 10 gig, and that's two of those, and lightning speed, and we have the four, the four Ethernet ports, and that's, why is that important? So you can access it, you can do some great, you know, port trunking, and get creative with your network, and, or fail over a network, or backup network, there's a lot of stuff you can do with those four uh, Ethernet ports, so. And, and we can explain to you how. We know without a doubt, just say, hey, guys, what, are these, you know, what, what can we utilize these four Ethernet ports for? And, and we'll, we'll, give you, we'll give you a manual on, on how you can port trunk and how you can change these things. Okay? So challenges for creatives. And as you know, I don't have to tell you this. You guys work on this every day. You know, a lot of you guys, and I have the privilege of working with, you know, personally with a lot of you in the studio, uh, you know, on your sites, on location, um, and trust me, some of the best designers in, in the world, uh, we're lucky enough to sit down and work with you. So we know, you know, what some of the challenges are. So um, photography, um, some of our, some of our, our, our biggest names and, and customers are photographers, okay? And what their biggest problem is, hey, I got a bunch of hard drives sitting around. You know, they're just sitting around everywhere. Uh, you know, um, it's hard to find stuff. I need to do searches. I need to do, but they're all laying around somewhere archived. Somebody asked me, hey, I want to see something that I did, you know, seven years ago. And you're like, wow, I have to go, you know, I have a hard drive with a post-it on it that says, you know, um, you know, from, from uh, 2003, you know, and you got to get that hard drive and you access it. So um, we know what that challenge is, okay, uh, post-production. Now, as we know in post-production, the time-consuming when sharing files, right? Transferring information, transferring files, 
it takes a long time, and that's something that no one has this time, especially when you have deadlines, right? You have deadlines. The boss wants to see this done. You have to answer to customers. The last thing you need is lag time, okay? So we know what that's like, and, and we've seen it. We've, we've seen, uh, you know, uh, these huge files being transferred, you know, across a network trying to get through and then the latency or the rendering and we're, you know, and everybody's biting their nails because the customer wants to see this and they're coming in, they're going to stop by, you know, one o'clock and they want to see this and we need to get this done. So um, we know that's important to you. Film multiple outings for shootings. Okay. Um, we know you guys got to get on the field. We know you guys got to get out and, and, and shoot. And the great thing is, again, we're talking about a system that's portable. You can pick it up, take it with you, you know, throw it in your truck and charge it up and you'll be able to create on the spot. Okay. As long as you have your workstation with you, you can do everything on the spot. Okay, and that's a great thing, and 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 the ability to do that. Okay, um, and using the the, the solid state drives uh, that are that are more rugged, right, versus versus the regular status that spin. So, um, advertising. Okay, uh, we work with a lot of ad agencies, a lot of a lot of our people. That's what they do, and they trust QNAP. So. As art directors, you have to work, again, the Thunderbolt speed. And, and we kept saying speed because that is what we hear a lot of. That's, a, that's always the, the key buzzword for us, speed, 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 speed. You know, we, we got to get this done. We have deadlines. And be, why? Because you created, you created uh, customers. You guys are fast working. You get, your, you get your job done. You're ready to go. But now, you're ne now you have to wait for your network. You know, it doesn't make sense if you guys, you guys are on the ball. You guys are the ones doing this great job, getting out there, and now you need to get this out. And it can't because it doesn't keep up to your speed. And trust me, in a creative world, that's the last thing you need is, is something very uncreative that's going gonna, gonna to take the spark out of your creativeness because you need to sit there and wait, wait for it to transfer, wait for it to render, wait for it to get out. You know, and it's, it's going to, you know, and if it doesn't already, you know, it's going to start eating at you and say, oh, man, you know, this is taking the creative juices, you know, out of me, you know. So, again, frustrating. So, Here's, here's a typical example of a workflow, if, if you guys don't know. Some of you guys who, who, uh, who, who aren't familiar with, you know, with, um, uh, with, this, you know, with this environment, with this world of photographers, they, they, here's on the left-hand side, they take the picture, okay, they remove the card, they enter it into uh, the uh, hard drive, you know, they pull information out, they bring it into, you know, Photoshop, uh, or they bring it into their favorite software, and then they edit it, right? And then from there, where does it go? got to send it to the Dropbox or Amazon S3 or, you know, uh, some other paid service in order to get it over to the customer, right? Because we know they're, they're big files and that's what they want. You know, I want to download these big giant files. So but it, we know it's, it costs money. I mean, you're, you have to literally pay to have these large pictures that, you know, they're, they're 2K and 4K images that people want to see for their weddings and, you know, for sports, sporting events and, and for, you know, for uh, photo shoots, right? So, um, Thunder, Thunderbolt now. So let's talk a little bit about. Um, here we go. So let's talk a little bit about the the the, the NAS workflow. Okay. Um, so how's it going to work with the QNAP Thunderbolt? Okay. How's it going to work? So this is the way. This is what it's going to look like, right? So you shoot the picture. Okay. You get your raw data and you get that right into your QNAP. Okay. Now what it's creating is actually less points of failure. Okay, we've eliminated two steps and two steps of points of failure, and that's what you want. You don't want, oh, man, this external hard drive is not working or it's crashing or, you know, something's wrong with it. And sometimes that stuff happens, okay? So, again, from photo shoot to raw, straight into the QNAP, okay? And then from there, from there, you can edit it, right? From there, you can, you can edit it and save it, right, and share it, okay? Now, there are downloadable links. You can right-click and send it over to your customer, and they can they can download that straight from the QNAP. Okay, so or if you want a backup service, you can. Again, you can send it up to the cloud and, and back it up there. But rest assured that you can share it directly from your QNAP. Okay, you can right click on the image, grab the link, and share it over to your customer for proof and say, here it is, here it is. So again, um, uh, for for us, it's it's you know, and for your customers, this is a great tool. You know, and why? Again, we're talking about eliminating points of failure when you're when you're creating okay because again uh, you don't want to lose the work you've created all that money that you spent that's that's time invested that's money for you right so dual thunderbolt ports remember we talked about so why do we have two thunderbolt two two dual thunderbolt ports okay and um here's why okay let's let's talk about that so 
Hold on a second. Okay. So here, so the, the dual Thunderbolt ports, as I mentioned, we have two of them. Why do we have two? Okay, so I, like I mentioned, uh, number one is you can connect to actually two different Macs and work directly onto that QNAP. Okay, so that's one way because you have the, the two, the two um, the Thunderbolts, right? And you're running it on a 10 gig network, so it's super fast, right? So um, an ability, again, again, the ability to share it, which is really important. So, and if you're not utilizing one of those, one of those um, Thunderbolt ports, one of those ports, you can actually then connect that port to the expansion unit, okay? And then that expansion unit to another one and just keep daisy chaining down, okay? And we're going to show you right now how that, what that looks like. And here it is. So, remember I said you can connect. And so here, we, here's, a, here's an image that shows you of one QNAP, okay, the TVS871, okay? And again, the two ports in the back, Thunderbolt ports are now daisy chained to eight more units on each side and eight more units down and eight more units down for a total of 448 terabytes, okay, if needed. If that, if, and it's, it's a great thing to know that, hey, if, if I ever need it, it's there. Rest assured, so I have not, that's one less thing you have to worry about, right? And so now you can focus on your work. Now you can focus on being creative and not have to worry about, man, what if I run out of space? When do you have to run out and buy something? Here, you can just expand you don't have to run out and buy a new QNAP. You just buy out the expansion units. Okay? They're, they're very economical. Okay? They don't have CPUs. They don't have any of that stuff. Okay? So, again, very economical, and it's a, it's a really, really good, good solution. So, all right. So, um, I'm going to put you on hold. Hold on one second, guys. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I had someone's mic on, and I, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't hear myself talking. So, and again, back to ability to expand, right, to expand to the 448 terabytes. So the expansion modules are, they don't have processors. They don't have, they don't have RAM. They don't have all that stuff. They're just enclosures, so they're very economical, right, and that's what we need. We want to be able to, uh, to not have to spend tons of money on buying, hey, let's go buy another NAS, another unit. No, no, just buy the expansion unit. Okay, so supported video editing software. Okay, so it supports, you know, it supports um, um, most, almost all of the supporting software. Why? Because it's just a storage unit. So, and we're going to walk to you, we're going to explain to you how and how that connects. So, we're going to take a look here. I'm going to walk you through a quick little demo, okay, and how that works. So, let's take a look here. And, um, and again, we will be, we, you will see a tutorial. Okay, and the tutorial is gonna is gonna show you, and it's gonna it's gonna walk you through um, uh, how to do this. Okay, and this is being recorded as well. So um, if you guys ever want to come back and watch and watch this, take your time and watch it, you can. Okay, uh, we will we will send the follow up of everyone that attended, uh, and again it will it will have the link of, of where you guys can uh, can view or upload it on YouTube, so you guys can sit back and relax and pause it and watch it and study it. So and how this is gonna work. So we're launching now uh, our QFinder, and the QFinder it's a, it's a basic application that you install that allows you to find all your, your QNAP NAS systems. And in this case, we can find here the TVS 871T. Okay, so we we'll just double click on it. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the network drives. Okay, and we're going to log in. It always asks for your login for security reasons. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to mount, okay, we're actually going to mount the system, okay? And it's giving you the ability to select whether you want it SMB or NFS. And the reason we have two is because, as, because as you know, some of these software require either SMB, right, or they require NFS. And that's a great thing to be able to select, pick and choose which one, right? So let's get this started. So here, as you can see, we just mounted, okay? We just mounted the QNAP via Thunderbolt, okay? And like I mentioned to you, now let's take a look at the IP, the IPs, guys. So, and as you can see here, this IP on the left-hand side, the 192.168, that's the actual QNAP IP. The one next to it, the 16, okay, the 169.254.9.175, that one's actually the Thunderbolt, the IP, 
Okay, so it's easy to distinguish. So now we know, and now we're now we're LinkedIn. So basically, now what we're doing is we've created. Now we're inside. Okay, now the storage is attached to our Mac system, and you can see it there. Okay, now you can see it here. So now from here, you can drag and drop things. See, we just drag and drop the, an image folder. Okay, very simple. Just drag and drop, and just drop things, and, and it copies over. Okay, and it's seam, seamless. And that again, that's that's really important. It, it took a couple steps to do it. Okay, so we're selecting again the network drive. Okay, we're gonna log in the admin password. Okay, so let's get in there. Okay, and now again, we're gonna change it over to NFS. Why? Because we're gonna use Final Cut Pro. And Final, as we know, Final Cut Pro uses NFS, so we're now gonna use the NFS. We're gonna start Final Cut. Okay. Okay, and we're going to go to New, Libraries. Okay, and see here, now we're actually here, see the arrow right here? Now we're actually in the actual QNAP. Okay, so now we're going to create a, you know, we're going to save it as, um, you know, something like a library, FSP library. So we're going to create a simple library. Excuse my typing. Okay. So there you go. Now, now I've created your library, so... Now you can re now you can save everything directly now onto your QNAP, and you can open things from QNAP, and it's mounted so it'll always be there. So when you save things and move things, uh, you can always you know file save as and it, it's going to be there, okay? And it's going to be there, and it's and it's easy to use and it's easy to transfer stuff. So um, and again, it's really simple, and this is the way it should be. We we don't you don't it should be something that's done very seamlessly, very simple, and you guys are set and done, and we're on our way. And again, like I said. Um, for creative individuals, um, you know, getting the job done, being on a timeline is very important. Okay, very important. So, so let's let's get back into uh, into our presentation. Okay, so and again, it, it, easy to use. Okay, easy to access, and anyone can do it. You don't you know you don't have to spend too much time there. Um, and again, any questions, technical questions that you guys have, we'll be more than happy to answer. Like how does you know how does it tie in? We'll be more than happy to answer those questions as well. And again, like we mentioned, um, expandability, okay, expandability, being able to to expand um, and not be stuck, okay, not be stuck um, with just you know a hard drive or hard drives, you know, the ability to 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 um, transfer data and information is what's really important for us, uh, okay, in, in, in nowadays, and this is, this is really important. So um, something that we've been working on in our, you know, in our, with our design team and our engineers. So and you can see here file sharing, okay, starting from the Mac on the left-hand side, connected directly via Thunderbolt to the QNAP. So you're saving things, creating things directly on there, okay. Then from there down, it branches, it branches down uh, into your, into your uh, expansion unit. Right, and that's what we want. We want to be able to expand if needed, right? So we're now we're expanding, okay? And so next to that, we have our our switch, okay? We're on a regular gigabit switch, and why are we doing that? So we can access it from anywhere in the world, okay? Now we have our laptops, we have our smartphones. It's out, and now we can go in and we can look at our our images, our pictures, no matter what it is. You can create a snapshot images and send it over to your customers and say, hey, what do you think about this? Can you proof this, okay? And so now you have the ability to do that. Okay, uh, transcoding as well. So uh, when you get the information out, you can get it on a, on on a on a smartphone, and it'll transcode it. Okay, so you have to worry about whether it's going to be you know a, a high definition movie because the smartphone will transcode it. Okay, so the QNAP app will transcode it, and that's really important because obviously, how are you going to get a you know a large file image, raw image you're trying to view uh, on your smartphone? The QNAP knows it knows that it's a big file, and it'll transcode it automatically. Okay. So collaboration ready, and again, um, very important, you know, in a team setting, in an environment setting, um, to be able to get this information out, to get it out, uh, you know, to the rest of your team that perhaps is going to do the final touches on it, or that's going to do the adding on it, it's going to do, you know, it's just going to, it needs more, you know, more things to attach to it. In a team setting, this is ideal, okay, that's why we do this. This is ideal in a collaborating, set, you know, setting where, where, you know, everybody has to come together to create a final product. Okay, so let's recap, guys, um, of the uh, TVS 871T, the, the QNAP Thunderbolt NAS. So 
uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the two, three, and fours. Okay, the two, three, and fours is uh, two networking technologies. Okay, each with dedicated bandwidth, and like we mentioned, the Thunderbolt two. Okay, the Thunder Thunderbolt two network and Ethernet. Okay, three, the storage technology. Okay, it is a DAS system. It's a NAS system. It's an iSCSI uh, IP SAN system. Okay, and all that's tied into one unit. All that is one is this one unit. It all comes together. Okay, and four ways to connect. Okay, and again, um, whether it's Mac, Windows, or Linux, we're talking about cross-platform sharing. Okay, be able everybody can access this, whether you have a Linux, you know, system or Windows or Mac. Okay, the highest cost-performance ratio of all storage solutions for Mac users and video production. Okay, um, it, you, you're gonna you're gonna hear about the price. The system's coming out. You'll be able to buy the system on the 21st. Okay, and you're gonna see the price, and you're gonna be like, "Oh my God, how is this thing so inexpensive?" Okay, and and, and you're gonna see, and and we created it that way, okay, and it's you're gonna be amazed at the price as well, okay. Um, so uh, built-in QTS and powerful NAS operating system. It's our own operating system um, that you can use within within your environment as well. Okay, it still does all the the great things you you know you've come and known about it. QNAP, it does the replication, it does the backup, it does the RAID, it does everything that, that makes QNAP famous, it still does that. And it does the direct, you know, attached storage, and it does the, you know, the the uh, the, 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 the Thunderbolt connectivity and, and, and the 10 gig and all in one, okay? Now we have it all in one, so it's, it's an amazing product. So, um, and again, here's something that's really interesting. We are going to be hitting the road pretty soon. So we are going to, ha in October, we are planning to be in Los Angeles, possibly the west side of Los Angeles, so you can come and try it for yourself. You know, we'll probably be providing, a, 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 you know, breakfast or lunch, uh, lunch so you guys can come over and, and, you know, try the system, test it out. We're doing the same thing in the east coast, okay? We're going to be doing that as well. In the east coast, we will, we will announce those dates and possibly uh, head down south as well, and and perhaps central, south, and, and maybe um, you know down in, in Florida as well. So uh, we will keep you informed as to when we do that. So if you guys want to swing by and try it out, uh, you know, give it a shot. Bring your system, bring your Mac, connect to it, and you know, give it a whirl. Let's see. We'll have workstations set up where you guys can come and, and test drive it. Basically, it's like an automobile. Uh, you're not going to drive it into your you know you're not going to buy into it. Test drive it. Well, we're going to give you the ability to test drive these systems um, and before you buy them. Okay, so we're going to be hitting the road, so keep your eyes out for this. If you registered for this, if you hear my voice right now, then you'll get these emails and invitations to come to these events. Okay, and hopefully you guys can make it uh, so we can, you know, so we can assist you guys. For the rest of you guys uh, that are in Europe and Latin America, we're going to do the same thing for you as well. Okay, in Mexico City, the same thing for, you know, for our customers in Europe as well. We will be allowing you to test drive it as well and, and you know, get hands on and give it a shot. Okay, give it a shot. So um, looking forward to that, for, to those events. So um, I, that's, that is, we're going to wrap it up now um, for, for today's uh, webinar uh, of the TVS 871 Thunderbolt Hybrid NAS. Um, on behalf of QNAP, I want to thank everybody who logged in. Okay, I know we still have some questions rolling in. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this open for a few more minutes and wrap up those questions. You can always email us as well. Okay, at USA Sales at QNAP.com. Uh, we will send you out a webinar special as well uh, in this follow-up email. So expect that as well. Uh, everyone who registered, everybody who attended the webinar will receive that as well. Uh, with special discount pricing. Again, any questions, concerns, always feel free to reach us at USASales at QNAP.com. My name is Hernan. On behalf of QNAP, thank you very much for your time. Have a great day.